Hi guys, welcome back to this space. My name is Frida. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you so much for joining. If you haven't subscribed, kindly make sure to do so. And let's get into today's video. So I wanted to talk about something that I got to learn very early when I got born again. And I will give a story just so that we can have a backstory to this story. <laughs> okay, so um, when I got born again, I got to go through discipleship class and my teacher was the late Elijah Ogoti and every day in his class he would ask who are you at first I didn't know how to answer this question because I thought he was just asking for our names and so he would do it every Sunday and I was like hmm don't you think that's a little bit too much can we just move on to something else and get to learn about something else we we cannot always be learning about identity and who you are and the other thing that he taught, taught us taught us was wisdom so those were the two things that we learned for the two years and i'm so glad looking back i'm so so glad that he got to teach us those two things because those have become the founding factors of my faith and of where i am at right now so now that i told you that story i will also tell you two stories in the bible the first story is the story of adam and eve and the next story is the story of jesus did i mention what the title is it is the importance of knowing who you are okay that is the importance of knowing who you are and the first story we are getting it from today i have my bible i'm not reading from my laptop we find it in the book of genesis chapter 3 but now the snake was more crafty than any of the wild animals the lord god had made he said to the woman did god really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden underline did god really say the woman said to the snake, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. And the enemy says, you will certainly not die. The snake said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing God and evil now let me take you back to this story when god was creating man he said let us make man in our image and likeness man was already like god but man did not know this about him because if he knew or if she knew that she was already like god she wouldn't have eaten to receive what what already she is so she disobeyed God to become what she already was. She was like God. Satan approached the woman and we know what happens. We know what happens. Man lost dominion. Man was cast out of the Garden of Eden. And here we are. Okay. So because man did not know who he was or who she was, like she was like God. She ate of the fruit. She disobeyed God. If she had known, she would have not eaten of the fruit so when you know who you are there are things that you will not do because of who you are and the enemy knows that most of us do not know who we are and that is why he can do with us whatever he wants but if you know who you are then the enemy will not be able to you know put doubts in your mind or in your life or whatever if you know who you are you will be able to stand firm against the enemy and his tactics. Let us look at a man who stood firm, who was tempted with the same, but he stood firm. And that man is Jesus. Matthew chapter 4, and we see Satan, the first temptation he says, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Not that Jesus didn't have the power, and the enemy was not a after the power of Jesus. Of course, he knew the power of Jesus. He was after the identity of Jesus. And Jesus did not give him a time in his life to put it out. Because when you say if, whenever you start a, st a sentence with if, you are putting doubt into that statement. And so he says, if you are the son of God, 
if you are the son of God, do this. If you are the son of God. And this reminds me, when we were growing up, even up to date, I, I don't know if girls still fall for this, you know. <laughs> I remember growing up, uh, boys would tell us, if you love me, do this. And so many of us, not me, <laughs> so many of us, so many of you out there, not me, lost their virginity or they lost what was precious to them or they had to sleep with boys to prove to them that they loved them. And even then the boys left anyway. So if you are really the son of God, tell these stones to be to become bread. But he knew who he was. So I'm not going, I'm just going to use the word of God. It is written. And then he goes ahead again. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written. Now you said, oh, so you're coming to me with the word of God. I will show you that I know the word of God. And so if you are the son of God, again, putting doubt because he wanted Jesus to doubt or to prove to him, prove to me that you are the son of God by doing this. But Jesus said, did not have time for Satan. He knew who he was and there is no way I'm going to prove to you like, who are you? I am the son of God. Who are you? And why are you asking me to prove to you? There is nothing that I need to prove to you. I love Jesus, y'all. And he says also, it is also written, you know, we see how Jesus is answering this. So when you know who you are, you will also know he knew who he was and he knew what was written. Two things very important. Know who you are and know what is written. And the third, he saw, oh, now I cannot be able to tempt this man using, I cannot, I, I haven't been successful with his identity. So let me try something else. And you will see it in a bit. And he says, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All these I will give you, he said. If you will bow down and worship me, if you will bow down and worship me, this is another thing where it is very important when you know who you are. When you know who you are, you know whose you are, then you will know what automatically belongs to you. Jesus knew he is the son of God. He also knew what was written about God. When you read in the book of Psalms 24 verse 1, it says that the earth and the heavens are God and everything that is in it belongs to God and if he is the son of God it means whatever belongs to his father belongs to him so he did not need to worship Satan to have what already belongs to him he did not need to bow down to Satan to have what already belongs to him by the right of him being the son of God so he was still tempting his identity do you know who you are? Because when you know who you are, you will know what belongs to you. You will first know whose you are, and then you will know what belongs to your father also belongs to you. So he did not have to worship the enemy to have that. It is by knowing that I am the son of God, and that makes me the legitimate in inheritor <laughs> next in line by me by the right of me by the right of sonship i am the son of god and that makes me the rightful owner of whatever it is that you're giving me when you listen to the world today there is an identity crisis among the young people every day they are waking up they are saying i identify as a cow i identify as whatever and my my pronouns are these and that and I just feel sad because your identity is attached to your purpose. If you must live out your purpose, you must know who you are. Because when you know who you are, you will know who you are and you know what you have. Those three things go together. You cannot know who you are and not know who you are and not know your maker. You cannot know who you are and not know what you have. So when the enemy, the enemy right now is doing the very thing he has been doing since the beginning of time, and he's just, you know, tweaking it a little bit. It is different. It is not like when it was, because we've already read about Adam and Eve. So he knows if we come to, if they, they have already read about me. So if I come to them, like I did, they will know. So I have to change my tactics. 
and I have to approach it differently. And so today he's presenting us with so many identities that you can identify as. And we think that is freedom. We think that is liberty. But it is not. That is a snare. Because once you begin to identify as anything other than what you are, you are, you are pulling yourself away from what you are created to do. And so you cannot even be able to live off your purpose. And your purpose is that thing that fulfills you. What you are meant to do brings fulfill fulfillment once you have done it. And so we are having so many empty vessels walking around. Do you know who you are? Do you know whose you are? And do you know what belongs to you because of who you are and because of whose you are? It is very important today that we learn who we are and that we be wise. We are told, Jesus told his disciples, be as wise as the serpent. The serpent is very wise. He is very wise. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to pull his cards well. And he has been pulling them since the beginning of the world. Up until now, he has been doing it. I hope that you won't be one of his statistics. That you will escape his statistics. That you won't be part of those that failed like Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. When you know who you are, when you know whose you are, you will automatically know what belongs to you. I hope that this was a blessing as much as it was to me. I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.